Welcome to Red 35 and it's still freezing in London and today we're looking at uh, another portrait lens the very cool one is the Olympus 75mm 1.8 It's so dinky Premium lens <laughs> <laughs> Another portrait lens today. Did you did you put the other one in the wash? Or uh, yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah. It came out from the tumble dryer. It's a shrunk. I mean, yeah, it's a lot smaller. It it it, it is a lot smaller. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is actually a very very different lens. Um, today we're looking at uh, one of the earlier uh, Michael Forsyth portrait lenses mm -hmm. when they cut it when Olympus introduce this entire mirrorless thing yep. and this is one of their premium lenses so you don't need that uh, translator thing for these ones. no no this works directly with the camera yeah and I did mention the word premium so they're fully metal mm -hmm. feels a lot better a lot smoother a lot sexier <laughs> and a lot more kind of like hipster look you know yep. like kind of cool look so this is the, this is the premium lens so of course you know it's a very nice uh, optically you know, like uh, uh, to wear that premium badge, it has to have certain kind of uh, uh, optical quality to satisfy, you know, the the target market. Mm -hmm. So people who buy these are generally uh, not only professionals, but uh, they cater for the very serious enthusiasts because they are not. Uh, in terms of pricing, they're not as expensive as professional lenses or the mm -hmm. pro lens, uh, but definitely a lot more compared to the entry level lenses. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to test out, you know, the how this thing actually performs because this is actually one of the most popular portrait lenses in the entire Olympus family. Oh, cool. So you mentioned before that this is a premium lens, right? Yeah. So it certainly looks it, but what kind of makes it like that? Uh, well, Olympus has given it a lot of thought, you know, uh, when it introduced the premium line, because it has to satisfy the more demanding users, not, on, not only just image quality side of it, but also build quality. So the entry level lenses, you know, they're made from plastic and it doesn't have, doesn't have that premium feel. Mm -hmm. So to differentiate the entry level lenses and the more higher level lenses, they have to make it metal. So that's first. So this mm -hmm. entire construction, most of the uh, uh, premium lenses, they are all made from metal. Okay. So it feels certainly, you know, a lot more high quality. And also so it's like... It's more like a preparation for your pro lenses, I guess. Correct. Yeah? Yes. And, uh, but not only that, in, in, uh, in terms of image quality as well, which I'm going to, we're going to come to that later, uh, uh, which is a a lot better compared to the uh, the general you know uh, entry level uh, lenses but yeah it I think in terms of um, uh, build quality this is actually very very good and also unlike the the pro lenses you know which is normally a bit bigger because they have weather resistance this yep. one uh, the premium lenses do not have any resistance at all so you, you can use it in the rain yeah it's not supposed to okay yeah um unless uh, you have an umbrella unless you have an umbrella or put uh, one of those plastic thing yeah. over it yeah people do that uh, but yeah it, it's, it certainly feels good uh the focusing ring is very very smooth it's focused by wire but it doesn't have that uh at this particular lens anyway it doesn't have the uh, what they call the olympus clutch system which is actually really cool uh, most of their professional lenses have the clutch mechanism and also some of the premium lenses also have that basically when you pull down the ring it becomes menu focus right okay. so since this one hasn't got the pull clutch thing so you have to basically enable the menu focus via the menu by the camera yeah, yeah via the camera so it's not as um, quick if you want to activate menu focus not something you can just pull back and shoot yeah. so uh, this is purely autofocus lens so to speak mm -hmm. um, but in terms of uh, uh, handling this is actually quite good and you can see the size of this yeah it's relatively small yeah. and for a 75 millimeters 1.8 this is tiny you know like compared to some full-frame lenses I know we're not supposed to compare full-frame lenses but uh, focal length 
uh, you know, supposed to be quite equivalent. So like, and 75 mm lens should have similar sizes in a full frame lens 75. Mm -hmm. But this is actually quite small compared to some of the lenses that I used before, like the 85 in Canon. Yeah. Um, this is still a lot smaller compared to them. Mm -hmm. So which is actually quite awesome. Um, so because of the size, it has a more uh, kind of so the central gravity mm -hmm. central gravity is more towards the back camera yeah. so when you hold it it's actually very well balanced so it, you know it doesn't really tie your your wrist too much yeah is, which is actually very good in terms of that so you can like you know shoot in all kinds of angle without feeling tired after a long while You mentioned that the premium lenses have a better image quality, right? Yep. So how much better are they? A lot better. And well, first of all, it, um, almost all the premium lenses has much wider aperture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like a lot of the entry level lenses, they are normally kit lenses. So they come with a maximum aperture, usually about 3.5. Uh, all the premium lenses, they start from the minimum, minimum I think is F2, which is the one that I use a lot of the, uh, the 12 millimeters, but most of them will be 1.8, 1.7, you know, they are quite fast mm -hmm. in terms of primes. So this one comes with 1.8, uh, which is actually very fast for a portrait lens, uh, but it's not the 1.2 that you saw from the pro lenses, which mm -hmm. they are even faster. Yeah. Um, so this I is kind of- if you're using them on a professional level, you need that kind of- Yeah, uh, yes. So. Correct. And um, I think one of the reasons why these lenses are quite popular, and even it's 1.8, but because it has a 75 millimeter focal length, we in full frame times 150, so it's actually quite long uh, compared to the general uh, 85 millimeter to 90 millimeter that sort of focal length that are uh, lots of portrait photographers usually use. Uh, 150 is not a common focal length mm -hmm. so it's quite long so you have a lot of restrictions sometimes like for instance you know like we're quite close to the canal yeah. so if I just shoot you know this sort of distance I I can only get your head so I yeah. can't even get your shoulder so this is how close this is you know mm -hmm. so like it's not for people who are working in a very restrictive env environment yeah uh, so it's a qu it's very s uh, special purpose portrait lens you need the space to work with it but in terms of image quality is absolutely bang on and this is actually um, I think if I remember correctly this is actually one of the sharpest uh, Olympus lenses on tests you know so wow. as people have done lab tests on you know the whole range of Olympi Olympus lenses this is one of the sharpest mm -hmm. so uh, we're gonna demonstrate that in how sharp this lens actually is so it's, it's really really that sharp and it's not a bulk quality the blurry th blur blurry thing <laughs> the blurry thing uh, <laughs> Thing, the blurry thing. Who knows what we're talking about? Yeah, you know, we we've done the other one, uh, yeah. the forty-two point five, mm -hmm. the seventeen, and also we've done the the monster thirty-five to one hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last week, and then I thought that was that one. You just put it in the wash. Oh yeah, forgot. Shit. <laughs> 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 they all have really unique bo uh, bokeh quality, and this one is no exception. It has a very creamy look. Uh, but certainly very different from the pro lenses cousins. They have the the feather bokeh. This one yeah. it hasn't got the same character. So the the focus area is slightly different. Yeah. But compared to the older generations like the 35 to 100 lens, it's also very different as well in terms of color tones because this is a more modern lens, so it's mm -hmm. got more contrast, micro contrast. It resolves detail really, really good. So this is very, very different lens, and then uh, it's so sharp that it could ref uh, see a lot of details. Yeah. So I still think that the pro lenses has that quality or better quality for uh, portraits especially for ladies yeah. remember we had that discussion you know yeah, like yeah. If, if it had too much details it could work reversely mm -hmm. especially for ladies as well you know and this one has that and and then uh, so whether good or bad is depending on what you want mm -hmm. I wholly recommend this lens to any photographer into portraits. Mm -hmm. Even though that I mentioned about certain limitations, like this is a very long lens, so you need quite a bit of space to I work mean, yeah, with. You had to go pretty far back. Yeah, you saw earlier. <laughs> I, I I had to walk, you know, like miles away. Oh, not. You just kept going. Yeah. 
Yeah, un unless, unless you want a really close up kind of headshot, you yeah. know, like otherwise, you know, you do have to work your distance um, simply because of the focal length, you know, like uh, unlike the 45, which we did before, I mean, I could stand relati relatively close to so still get your half body shot. Yeah. This, I have to go far away. Yeah. So that's the only limitation I would give about this lens. But in terms of image quality, you saw the shots. Yeah. Really tech sharp. The bokeh quality is really, really nice and creamy. Very high contrast, you know, lots of details there. Very smooth, the bokeh. Um, yeah, I think in general, just really good lens. Uh, and also, yeah, you have, you know, like I mentioned before, this is not a pro lens, so it hasn't got weather sealing. So don't try to shoot in the rain. Yeah. Yeah, not that you would like to place your model in the rain anyway, unless, you know. You're so I guess also like a beach shoot, for example, wouldn't be. It wouldn't be ideal. Advisable. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't unless be. you've got a special cover for it, I guess. Correct, yes. And uh, yeah, so I wouldn't be standing in the water to take the shot just in case, you know, yeah. like this splash and things like that. Um, it's not advisable. It's not that I haven't done before. I've done, you know, with premium lenses in the rain, mm -hmm. but not heavy rain. Like mild rain is okay. It's okay. It's okay, just like any other lenses. But um, the overall, is I think it's, it's very, very good lens. And for the value, this is actually not very, because it's not professional lenses. Yeah. They, they're not having the pro professional price tags on it so it's not extremely expensive so it's, it's relatively affordable so I think it is really good for people who are into portraits you know this is a really good lens to get um, yeah very good so you know if you are really into shooting portraits pretty ladies like Charlie remember and then uh, to make them look <laughs> beautiful stunning angel like oh, princess like you know and <laughs> then uh, this is this is the lens to go for because you know it having that 1.8 aperture does help to separate the background yeah even with the smaller sensor like the micro four third you know like some of the shot you saw it separates the you know yourself in the background and the foreground quite well and uh, yeah this is really good really good highly recommended double <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, got you in <laughs> So remember, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the button down there. And if you forgot who Charlie is, her social media link is down there as well. And remember to check her out. And she has lots and lots and lots of fans. So join the party. And us as well. Don't forget. <laughs>